Israel Adesanya versus Robert Whittaker was a bit of a chess match. For Whittaker to make improvements, this is the kind of fight it was going to have to turn into. I mean, rushing into Adesanya, trying to make something big happen, you know, some big knockout, going for some huge takedowns and stuff like that from the open. That kind of stuff is going to be a lot more risky for Whittaker. And coming off that last loss, he's not going to try to come into this fight risky again. Now, here's a general thing that happened here. Adesanya won the fight mostly off of leg kicks. Whitaker does not have a natural good defense to them. He doesn't naturally counter them. He doesn't naturally check them. Mostly given his stance, it's kind of sideways. His lead leg is out there in the opening. Karate stances aren't naturally really good against leg kicks. Knowing how powerful Adesanya is, he was able to slam those in there even openly. No masking, no setups at all. The other thing you saw from Adesanya, he talked about it after the fight. He was holding his right hand. Some people thought he probably hurt his right hand, but no, Adesanya's actually done this before. He said he was putting power in it, or he was holding it for power, sometimes even using it as a distraction to pump out jabs, which are actually pretty successful against Whitaker. Holding your right hand and then snapping out a jab can actually be extremely effective. You probably have seen this before. Yuri Prohaska is someone who uses the same technique, throws out his right hand a little bit more when he does it, but it's something that's been shown to be effective in the past. And Adesanya wasn't really kidding. When he said he was putting power in the punch, or he was holding it for power, every time he threw the right hand, it was meant to end the fight. He was looking to throw the right hand and end Robert Whitaker literally every time. Some people might say that he might have limited himself when he was doing this, and he probably should have thrown his right hand out for different reasons other than that. He was also throwing a lot of right hip feints. This actually goes right into what Robert Whitaker did for the entire fight, attacking the right hip feint specifically. After the first round, we'll get into that. Robert Whitaker was looking to punish every single right hip feint in the entire fight, always looking to attack off it, and he was very successful doing it. So first round Whitaker was very different than the rest of the fight. It was almost like he took the game plan from Yuval Romero and Paulo Costa, almost like a mix of that, using his own attacks. He was sitting on the outside, made only one attack forward. It was the same game plan of Romero and Costa, waiting for Izzy to attack first, to lead the attack, so he can counter him. This is a kind of game plan that was even used against Anderson Silva back in the day, you know, a good counter puncher, moving forward first is a weaker and more open fighter to hit. Now this game plan for Whitaker actually wasn't too bad knowing how fast he is to explode forward right? he has a blitzing karate style. He's extremely quick to snap out the jab specifically which was working for the most part of the fight but the first round the reason why this game plan was not working out was because he wasn't using the jab as a counter he was using his right hand more. Another huge important thing was he was only trying to counter Adesanya strikes. Afterward, he was looking to counter the feints, and those were more effective than countering the actual strikes themselves. For that, he was missing almost every shot. Throwing his power hand is going to be an easy attack for Adesanya to see and evade. But this wasn't the only problem with the game plan. The other thing was, Whitaker made no advances besides attacks. He started to feint a lot more after the first round, and it was working a lot more for him, as well as attacking and countering only with his jab and left hook. Only use his right hand on certain occasions. It was only the jab for the first round when he wasn't doing this, his leg was getting kicked like crazy. Something we talked about before, if Whitaker is trying to stay on the outside and be very slow in the fight, he's going to get picked apart by the longer fighter. It's an easy thing to imagine. You stay far from a long fighter, you're going to get hit from a distance where you can't hit them. Feints are making him move the way he didn't want to, and ultimately he couldn't gauge what Adesanya was trying to do to him. For an example, Adesanya would feint with his jab twice and use that front step with it. What's a perfect counter to the front step jab? A round low kick. Whitaker goes to throw it thinking that another jab was going to come and it ultimately misses because Adesanya was only using this as a feint waiting to draw out that leg kick. The reason why this leg kick is a perfect counter against that front step jab because when you take that step, you're naturally open up your leg to the round leg kick and when you're throwing a jab, you naturally turn your leg to the inside. Can even show your hamstring for a leg kick to your opponent. While doing this at the same time, you can parry the jab with your right hand. Perfect counter, right? You actually saw this in the very next round that Izzy used this against Whitaker, countered Whitaker's jab using the right low kick. And then the left straight lands in the first round. The reason why this happened was the leg kicks from Adesanya was causing so much damage, Whitaker started to respect it a lot. So Whitaker lifted his leg up in order to check, planting himself in space for the left hand to hit him. This is actually something that happened later in the fight as well. Almost the exact same kind of thing. But instead, Izzy actually feints forward with the right hip. Looking like he's going to throw a right low kick. This causes Whitaker to lift his leg up again in order to check. Izzy off steps to his left to get that perfect angle to sneak in the jab right through the guard. Look how similar Whitaker's defense was. Another reaction to this right hip feint was that it caused Whitaker to turn his leg outward in order to check. This time not lifting it up. But this rotation of the leg, the checking for the right low kick, opens up the other side of his leg 
for the inside leg kick. I mean, Adesanya's fainting was filthy in this fight, man. Barely fainting forward, like showing his left shoulder and stuff like that. And Whitaker would make drastic movements to get away. I mean, like from one or two feints. You see Whitaker making like three or four reactions. That's what you want to see, man. That's what you want to get out of your opponent. The more reactions you get from one feint, the more successful that feint was. First round, you also saw a great sprawl from Adesanya when Whitaker started to lose attacks and look a little bit lost of what he wanted to do in that first round. So he went for a takedown, fainting up high first, going under. Adesanya had a strong sprawl, man. And ending that first round, there was a great exchange, great moment from Adesanya where he was throwing a right low kick, this time telegraphing a lot more, and Whitaker was able to actually lift his leg above the leg kick, which is actually pretty funny when we look at it. His whole leg goes above the low kick. He tries to take off, fading out to his left side. Adesanya does not let this happen like he did a couple times before, starts knocking on Whitaker's guard, almost like he's knocking on a door using his back fist, because this tight guard that Whitaker has is going to limit his vision, he's not able to see everything clearly, so tapping on the high guard is going to cause Whitaker to think that something's going to come up high, but in fact the kick goes to the body instead perfectly. The angle that these guys were moving was taking off power away from Izzy's body kick, but ultimately man, it lands beautifully. Adesanya's takedown defense was kind of there. He got taken down more than he's ever been in the UFC, I believe. But he had some good sprawls against the cage. He's a lot better at defending takedowns. He was trying to defend him using the Kimura. The first time, it worked. The threat from the Kimura actually got Whitaker to change his focus from the takedown to the Kimura itself. Second time, though, Whitaker was actually able to turn that against Adesanya. Instead of attacking back on the Kimura, he actually switched into the single leg, adding some more leverage, and then he sat back a little bit. Just sat back a little bit amount of weight in order to put more pressure on Adesanya's arms, as well as extending that grip forward, weakening it. But there was an unfortunate circumstance that got Adesanya taken to the ground when he threw a high kick. Whitaker was putting up a guard, but at the same time he lowered his stance. This caused the kick to bounce off the hand and get caught on the shoulder. Whitaker advanced forward, moved forward right into Adesanya and took him to the ground. So the first round was different. Second, third, fourth, and fifth round Whitaker was completely different. He was actually attacking first at times, not allowing himself to get pressure so easily. So those initiative jabs and feints also allowed him to escape pressure. Simple fainting forward causes Adesanya to move back which opens up space for Whitaker to angle out using his jab to great effect and what you noticed was Izzy did not have a good time with that jab oftentimes he was actually getting hit in open space not only that he was able to counter Adesanya's jab pairing it slipping his head on the outside of it entering behind his own he was able to interrupt a lot of feints because of that jab and that's something I'm going to touch later because it was one of the biggest aspects for Whitaker in the entire fight and the jab was so successful in the fight so effective that Whitaker even attempting a takedown made it look to Izzy like he was going to throw a jab so like we said before the perfect counter to that front step jab is the right low kick but the takedown came instead counter the leg kick but Izzy was still able to defend the takedown very well here is the beauty of having low hands for your stance Whitaker is always having his hands kind of low right it's his natural stance and it can be hard sometimes to see what he's going to throw at you and that really comes in the form of a jab the takedown and the jab from the stance look similar the initial explosion for them makes it kind of hard to tell which one of those attacks is going to come out and Izzy thought that it was going to be a jab but it was a takedown down. This could have actually been used a lot more in the fight for Whitaker, but it is something for him to probably look back on. And we have to talk about that side kick to a takedown combination from Whitaker in that second round, man. It was a silly kind of combination that you don't normally see from MMA fighters. After watching the fight, fighters should probably implement this kind of combo to their arsenal because it's a natural transition from the side kick to the takedown. But against Izzy, it needs kind of special requirements for it to work. So naturally, how this chains up together is the side kick, if it misses, it almost acts like a big step forward to getting right into your opponent, getting right into their hips, and that forward momentum is going to draw in a lot of power for you to drive forward. It's an excellent combination, but the opening was only there against Izzy as an interception when Izzy was moving forward due to the angle of the hips and the hips being a lot closer for Whitaker to attack. When you look at the other rounds when Whitaker threw a low side kick, he stepped in far in there and could have gotten on the hips, but when Izzy moved away, the angle for the double leg was not necessarily there. Whitaker could potentially chain this up into a single leg, which would have been somewhat successful, but usually how that goes down is Izzy is able to back up to the cage, back up to the fence, and it's a lot harder to take down from there. The side kick itself eventually turned out to be very effective when Whitaker was intelligently timing Adesanya's footwork. Whenever Adesanya moved forward with his back foot, Whitaker attacked with a low side kick on the front knee. Because when you bring forward your back foot, you're kind of cementing where you're going to stand. Wherever the back foot moves, that's where the body is going to move and that's where the body is going to stay momentarily. So the lead knee is going to be open for the attack. This happened multiple times throughout the fight for Whitaker. And as you can see, it's a pretty advanced move. 
Now, something happened in the fourth round that people were kind of questioning, especially the commentators. When Whitaker was able to push Adesanya back to the fence, why didn't he pressure? Why didn't he keep that same pressure that Adesanya was able to do to him? Right, Adesanya was able to re-engage on pressure and keep Whitaker backing up whenever he really wanted to. But when Whitaker got Adesanya to move back, he didn't do the same thing. I mean, he should have probably done it, but it's just not his style. I mean, guys cannot change the way they fight. Whitaker likes to be in the center of the cage. And another thing here is the takedowns are more effective in the center than they were against the fence. So ultimately for the wrestling itself, being in the center was better for Whitaker, but striking wise, keeping Adesanya to the cage was actually going to be more successful, but ultimately not a style he backed away. It is what it is. And then we finally go to the main game plan. The main thing that was working for Whitaker throughout the entire fight, countering the feints specifically. And this is very specific. He was countering that right hip feint almost every time it happened after that first round. Most of the time he was going to the jab and then left a combination or double jabbing it. Sometimes he was just throwing a right hand, sometimes a darting right straight. But ultimately, that right hip feint is a heavy feint. It's not a soft feint that you just kind of like throw your hands out a little bit. When you're stepping forward like that and turning your entire body square to your opponent, it's not a safe move to do. It can get a lot of big reactions out of your opponent as you saw in the first round and ultimately can help you win the fight, but it can backfire. And Whitaker was able to land a lot of shots off of that right hip feint, but Adesanya kept going to it, eventually trying to read that situation, use it against Whitaker, playing kind of a chess move here, attempting to move away and counter Whitaker almost in the same fashion he knocked him out in the first fight with. Lean away from the shot, left hook to draw Whitaker the other direction into Adesanya's right hand. As we said before, Adesanya's always putting power into his right hand whenever he threw it. And we all know that Whitaker likes to fade off after his engagement, after his aggression, and then ultimately throws him right into the right hand as well. But Whitaker was very good at keeping his hands up. This is what Adesanya was talking about, that Whitaker's boxing defense has improved into this fight. And that leads us right into some of the moments of the fight here. For example, in the second round, 3 minutes to 31 seconds, Adesanya made a low feint, which is something he didn't normally do in the fight. Most of the feints were right hip feints or using his hands up high. This feint triggered and drew out Whitaker's reaction of throwing out those jabs. First jab almost lands, Izzy was able to move away from it, planting himself backwards after that punch to try to counter Whitaker with a right uppercut, knowing that Whitaker is constantly moving his head to the right side when he's throwing that jab. Probably not expecting a double jab, a second one to come afterward. He gets tagged himself first, but he still was able to land the right uppercut. Whitaker took the blow pretty well. And then we go to the fourth round, 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Adesanya switches into orthodox, throwing a fake left knee. The reaction he gets out of this was Whitaker was moving back into the fence a little bit more. Knowing Whitaker's reaction, Whitaker's going to dip his head to the right and throw out jabs. Adesanya kind of chops down with his left hand in order to measure for his right. This left hand is not meant to cause any damage, just made to find the target for his right hand to connect. Unfortunately for Adesanya, Whitaker's jab actually connects with his right hand, throwing the entire punch off most fighters in this moment would not be able to make any kind of adjustment and adapt in that exchange, but Adesanya was able to duck under the single collar tie and step back into a lead high kick that just misses, man. Whitaker was able to pull back on the kick, and that's the end of the breakdown, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.